This video is about the fundamentals of genetics. This is pretty much a series of vocabulary and basic concepts that anyone would need to know in order to understand further videos about genetics, modes of inheritance, etc. So this is a good base. Feel free to jump ahead, skip, and just find the parts that you need to review. So to begin with, genetics is the study of heredity and the material that our genetic code, our hereditary information, is coded in is DNA. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acids. You can see D and A. And it's just the biological molecule that codes for the production of proteins. And when proteins do their job, a certain trait is expressed. So Proteins are going to build organisms or actually be a product themselves. DNA, long strands of DNA are called chromosomes. So these are just long strands of DNA that have regions on them, some code for production of proteins, and other parts of the chromosome do not. You may see, if you're looking in a book or a diagram, a chromosome looking like this. Or you might see it in its replicated form like this, kind of looking like an X. DNA, you typically see in this shape, this is a double helix shape. So if you see this, this is a picture of DNA. Genes are sections of DNA on a chromosome that code for the production of a protein. So these, so genes are those protein coding regions. So you may see in a picture a this green line as like a strand of DNA, and part of that, those being coding regions called genes, and then most of your DNA actually um, is non-coding, sometimes called junk DNA. We're learning more and more that some parts of the junk DNA may actually have functions, non-coding functions, but still functions, within the cell and the genome. When you see a picture of a gene, you may see it, you know, a series of them linearly, or you may see a picture of a chromosome, and if it's like a, a, a map, a gene map, then you might actually see these little colored stripes that represent the genes. So when a gene's product, a protein, does its job, it does its function, or if it doesn't, a trait is expressed. And examples of traits are like height in pea plants, wing shape in fruit flies, eye color, hair color, fur color. There are all sorts of physical and some behavioral traits that are determined by your genes. Genes come in many forms, and that's why we don't all look alike. Different forms of genes are called alleles. Alleles are just alternate forms of a gene. So an example, we have the gene. There's a gene that codes for the production of a protein called tyrosinase. And its function is to make the brown pigment molecule melanin in your skin. The different alleles for this protein are the allele that will give you pigmented skin or the allele that, if it doesn't function, will result in albinism, which means you don't make pigment in your skin or hair or eyes. Another example of different alleles for a gene is there's a gene for the beta globin protein on your red blood cells and the function of this gene is to carry oxygen to the body. So it's on your red blood cells and it carries oxygen and that's great. Now there are some alleles of this. There's HBA which is hemoglobin A which gives you normal shaped red blood cells that carry oxygen quite, quite well. And then there's HBS is another allele of the gene for beta globin that's mutated and as a result the red blood cells are shaped like crescent moons or sickles 
And so these are called sickle cells. There are different types of alleles that show up in nature. The major allele that you see in nature is called the wild type. So if you are looking at nature, most of the individuals will have whatever allele. So for example, in humans, brown eyes is the wild color of, for eyes um, because those folks have a functioning TYR gene that makes melanin so they have brown eyes. Another example of a wild type allele is normal height in humans. And that's because we have a functioning FGFR3 gene. This is important for growth and maintenance of your bones. Very important to note, wild type, meaning the most common, is not the same as being the dominant allele. And here's an example. So if it's not the wild type, it's called a mutant allele, right? So these are any allele that's not the wild type. Now, if we're looking at brown eyes are in fact dominant to blue eyes. And so in this example, our mutant allele gives us a non-functioning TYR gene, which makes a non-functioning tyrosinase protein, which results in blue eyes. So blue eyes, in this case, are actually recessive to brown eyes. However, the mutant allele for achondroplasia, which is a form of dwarfism, not commonly seen, not the wild type, um, is a result of a non-functioning or a mutated FGFR3 gene, and therefore a non-functioning protein that's going to result in dwarfism. But this, achondroplasia, this allele is actually dominant over normal height. So just be sure that you know to differentiate between that wild and dominant don't mean the same thing. Okay. Speaking of dominant and recessive, a dominant allele is an allele that is expressed even when there's only one copy of that allele in a cell. And it's notated as a capital letter. So letters represent genes, and the case of the letter, either uppercase or lowercase, uh, designates whether it's dominant or it's recessive. So recessive alleles, on the other hand, are alleles that are expressed only when two copies of that allele are present in the cell. So you would have had to get a copy of the recessive allele from both parents in order to see it. So my example here is looking at pea plant height. Um, if I have a purebred tall plant and a purebred short plant, the gene for tall is dominant over the allele for short and so your offspring are actually all going to be tall even though they carry, their, they carry a one copy of that allele. But you're not going to see it as short because this recessive allele is repressed by the dominant one. Combinations of genes are referred to as genotypes. So there are, if we're looking at basic Mendelian genetics, that whole idea of dominant alleles and recessive alleles, the three genotypes that exist there are homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, and heterozygous. Homozygous means that you have two identical copies, two of the same allele for a gene. So we uh, give the notation um, uppercase A, uppercase A, and homozygous recessive, homozygous again because they're the same allele and they're the recessive version of that allele. 
You may also see the terminology in some um, problems or questions of a purebred organism or something that's purebred for a certain trait. That gives you indication that you're talking about a homozygous individual. On the other hand, there's heterozygous individuals, hetero meaning different, and they have different alleles for the same gene. And so, in this case, we have a big A and a little a. And another word, if you ever see the word hybrid, then we know that we're talking about a heterozygous individual. Genotypes, or gene combinations, when they code for the proteins and the proteins do their job, a trait is expressed, and that trait is called a phenotype. So your phenotype is a physical feature, that's how I remember, they all have that f sound. So phenotype is a physical feature that's a result of a specific genotype. So if we stick with our example of pea plant height, you have a homozygous dominant genotype, which leads to the phenotype of tall. You may also have a heterozygous um, genotype. And again, since that big A is dominant over little a, you're going to get a tall plant. And if you're homozygous recessive, because you have two copies of the recessive allele, one from each parent, you're going to end up with the short version of the plant, the short phenotype. And lastly, some basic language that you're going to see as you study genetics discuss different generations. So you may see something discussing the P generation, and P just stands for parental. These are going to be the organisms that are first crossed in order to study some gene. The offspring of the P generation are called the F1. F stands for filial, so the first filial generation, the first set of brothers, um, are the offspring of the P cross. And then, if you take two individuals from the F1 generation and mate them, that will form the F2 generation. F2 for second filial generation. So these are then the offspring of the F1 cross. And it's important because what's interesting is genes that are passed, alleles that are passed from parental generation to F1 may be hidden and then appear again when those F1 organisms are crossed to make an F2 generation. So these are some of the fundamental concepts and vocabulary that you need to be familiar with as you move forward in your study of genetics.